Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, so happy to have you here on Zoom for now on WebEx. Hopefully, one day we will be able to be together on around a table for that meeting. Once again, good evening, and I hope that you are okay. So, um, I welcome all of you uh, for tonight, and uh, it's 7.32 p.m. on a Tuesday, October 3rd. I will call this meeting to order. So, as a check-in, I will call your name and I will ask you to answer uh, one of these two questions. One, is there any park around where you live that mean any lighting, you know, uh, check? Like, I know that some people were complaining about, you know, some park being dark at night. So this is one of the questions I will ask you um, to answer if you have this issue. Or you can let me know which part do you want us to work as a second part. Now we are focusing on second part. Is there any part that you want us to focus, you know, the next time? So it will be till then now and then the next will be the one that you will pick for tonight. So that's the two questions. I will start with Ms. Turner. Hi, Ms. Turner. You can just greet um, the committee members and pick one of the two questions and answer. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, would, my, I would answer question one, which is the lighting in Tilden Park. Um, in the evening when it's dark, the people in the park can see you very well, but you can't see into the park. And we have a problem with people hanging out overnight and doing various and sundry things. And I think if the park was more well lit, that would stop that or at least cut it back quite a bit. So lighting is my issue. Okay, thank you. Um, I will uh, give it to Ms. Adele Bennett. Yes, good evening, and I will tell the committee member. And I would say the lighting problem around, it's called Railroad Park. It's on Fitness between 91st and 92nd. It needs more lighting at night, and it needs a little bit sprucing up. Because if you want to that park is uh, a lot of people are using areas, this is a large space, so you put it in the park and put it all around the park. And the entrance oh, of the park is supposed to have a sign, so the sign says no parking, the entrances, and the loops and areas. It's missing from most of the parks that I noticed in this district. All right, thank you, Ms. Otto. Um, Ms. Jackie? Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Jackie Williams, and I, the park next to my house is Tilden Park. And like Ms. Turner, I'm concerned that the park is not lit, there no, there's no lighting, and that certainly would deter some of the negative things that happen in that park. So that yeah. I'm Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we have the first presenter that is here, Mr. Antonio from uh, DSNY. We are just doing check-in, and then soon after that, you can start with the first uh, presentation. And also, Ms. Chambly from Partnership for Party here, um, you will have your turn answer. Um, I will ask Ms. Um, Bree the Costa um, to greet the committee members and then let us know uh, which park you want us to focus on or if there is any issue with lighting with any park that you know of. Good evening, um, I, Brie DeCosta here. I am, uh, I'm in agreement with what um, Ms. Turner and, um, was it Jackie? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, what she said about Tilden and the lighting there. I don't really have exposure to other parks. That's the closest park to me. And a lot of the parks, the other parks that we have been to in the area have really great lighting like Winter is um, close to us and that park is pretty well lit and it also um, has had a few renovations. So um, yeah, um, I would say Tilton 
I have ridden Bob Cardigat Park a couple of times. That might be some lighting in the like closer to the front of the park. Um, what is that on Foster? I believe. Uh, I feel like it might not be as well lit. Like, like once you get past the the, the street and go a little bit further into the park, it might it might be able to use a little bit more lighting. But that's that's all I can really speak on. Okay, thank you. Um, I am trying to see if we can go quicker. Miss um, Colin Godin. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, I too believe um, the lighting is the most important um, thing for me. Um, the closest part to me is on Ditmas and between 91st uh, and 92nd, and um, the lighting is poor. So, so yes, I think that would be the where we are focus first. All right, thank you. I will go now to Ms. Audrey Henderson. Good evening, everyone. My name is Audrey Henderson. The, I don't have much exposure to other parks. The park closest to me is Paddygut, and I don't really pass around there in the night, so I can really say if there's a problem with the lightning. All right, thank you so much. I saw Mr. Ted uh, will sign up. Mr. Ted, you want to say anything about any lighting um, or in the park that you know of that need? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, good evening, everyone, George Tate. Yes, um, and like Audrey, <laughs> I walk my father, father the park every single night because I do my exercise around there. And it's very, very dark. I reported that many times that uh, when you're walking around, especially on uh, East 40th Street, it's very, very dark. Inside of the park, it's also dark. And you have people in the air at night, just like um, Ms. Turner mentioned about Tilden Park. The same thing over here, Paragon Park. It's very dark, and people are hanging in there. But we definitely need park, and more, and especially on East 40th, but also on uh, Albany Avenue. It's very dark. Okay, oh, uh, and you. that goes to say just about every park in the neighborhood in the city 70 need more light. Okay, um, so did I call every, everyone or someone is missing? Who did I, did I forget anybody? All right. <laughs> So um, now I don't know if you get a chance to look um, over the agenda um, for the minutes of the last meeting. Um, now the meeting will be um, for the minute. You will have to go online to listen to what was said in the previous meeting. So I know some people might have questions on how to access that. Maybe we can, you know, say after uh, the presentation and talk about, you know, how to access that. Maybe Ms. Fraser can assist us um, to find out how to access the minutes of the last meeting. Um, I will ask Ms. Mr. Um, Antonio to introduce himself um, for the presentation right now. We will have a presentation on lease and yard with mandatory separation. I don't know if you heard um, this news, but I think um, as the parks and beautification committee, we need to be informed about the, um, you know, new development, new issues, uh, new rules. So I will ask Mr. Antonio uh, Whitebaker, I don't know if I pronounced the last name correctly, to please introduce yourself and start with the presentation. Thank you. Um, sure. Um, good. Ms. Antoine, if uh, you can hear me, you pronounce my name uh, pretty correctly. It's Whitaker. You, you just have to say a little bit but thank you for that. I do appreciate that. Um, good evening, uh, CD17. Uh, my name is Antonio Whitaker. I am the assistant director of the uh, Community Affairs Bureau at the Department of Sanitation, and thank you for having me tonight. Um, so as Ms. Uh, Antoine mentioned, um, she had asked for uh, my office to do a brief presentation on uh, the uh, leaf and yard waste um, 
separation as well as the uh, food and food console waste, um, which actually begins, uh, the, the program which actually begins in Brooklyn uh, this week, it actually started yesterday. So let me share my screen, give me one second. The share button is the third one on the screen. I see it, ma'am. I'm just have. Let me just uh, make sure I have it down here. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I'm. Okay. Can everyone see that? Sure. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so as I had just mentioned, um, curbside composting, basically composting your food waste and your leaf and yard waste uh, began yesterday, October 2nd, for all of Brooklyn. We're actually, uh, we've actually expanded service. Uh, so service began in Queens uh, last, uh, earlier this year, actually. Um, we will be expanding into the Bronx and Staten Island in March of next year and in Manhattan uh, in October of next year as well. So leaf and yard waste are mandatory. Um, the department asks that you put your leaf and yard waste uh, in a bin with a secure lid or a bag separate from trash. Uh, we ask that you put it in a clear plastic bag, not a black bag. Um, here's a rule of thumb that I tell folks when they ask me about this. Black bags equal trash. Clear bags equals everything else. So just keep that in mind when you're putting out your trash and your recyclables, that all your recyclable material, um, your paper, your plastic, your cardboard um, should go in clear plastic bags. Your leaf and yard waste can also go in a clear plastic bag, or you can put that in a bin if you so choose. Um, we do have brown bins that you can order from the Department of Sanitation. Um, we still have a few available. Uh, and they are available up until October 13th. So I, and later on in my presentation, I'll share with you all the link and the website to go on in order to order a brown bin if you need one. So all residential buildings can participate, including single family homes, small apartment buildings, and multi-unit residential buildings. Collection will be the same day as your recycling every week, which means the department will pick up your leaf and yard waste and any food scraps that you choose to compost um, on your recycling day every week. Uh, leaf and yard waste is mandatory. So no enforcement for food scraps and food soil paper at this time. I get this question a lot, um, particularly here um, in Brooklyn, now that the program has just started. Um, a lot of folks are concerned about getting a ticket or a summons from the department if they don't um, if they don't separate their uh, leaf and yard waste or your food scraps. Um, you will not get a ticket um, if you uh, don't uh, compost your food scraps and food soil paper at this time. Um, but you could still get a ticket if you don't properly separate your leaf and yard waste, right? So um, enforcement won't actually start for um, composting of food until April of 2025. So composting keeps our home and neighborhoods cleaner. Putting leaf and yard waste, food scraps, and food soil paper in bins with secure mm -hmm. lids keeps rats out and it keeps our city clean. 
So what's a compost? Your leaf and yard waste, that includes plants, leaves, twigs, and grass. A food scraps, which includes fruit, vegetables, meat, bones, dairy, and prepared food. And food soil paper, such as napkins, towels, tea bags, plates, coffee filters, even pizza boxes. Um, so we ask that you don't put your composted material in with your recyclable material. That is your metal, your glass, your paper, um, your uh, your cardboard, and obviously don't put don't mix commingle it in with trash as well, um, because you could possibly get a ticket if a sanitation worker sees that. Um, you commingled your leaf and yard waste and any food scraps that you have with your recyclables or with your recyclable materials. And again, as I said, um, enforcement for uh, your not recycle, not properly recycling or not properly composting, rather, your food scraps won't start until April of 2025 because the department realizes that asking people to um, to set aside their old food, uh, their spoiled food, um, and not throw it in the garbage, but to set it aside to be composted. Um, we understand that that's a heavy lift for a lot of people. And we're asking people to basically change their behaviors when it comes to food waste. Uh, most of the time when you um, finish eating a meal and you have leftover food that you don't want, you just immediately throw it in the trash, right? You eat a banana, you throw that peel in the trash. So we're asking you to think about food differently. So instead of thinking of food as trash, think of it as fuel, think of it as compostable material. Um, we can take that food, we can take all those old food soil paper, like napkins, even your pizza boxes, and we can compost that and we can turn that into fertilizer, we can turn that into renewable fuels, so we understand that this is going to be a heavy lift for folks. We ask um, that everybody try to make a concerted effort to, uh, to help us out. So where does, where does the compostable materials go? So compost collected in Brooklyn is anaerobically digested at the Newtown Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant, which is right here in Queens. Uh, right here in the city, it's uh, located in uh, Newtown Creek, uh, right in Queens. Um, we also send out compost materials to several processing facilities um, outside of the state as well, depending on where it was collected. So composting is pretty easy. Um, so we ask that you separate your food scraps and yard waste from your trash. You empty your food scraps and yard waste into um, your bin outside. Obviously, you know, you can get a brown bin from the department or you can use your own bin. Um, it just can't be any bigger than 55 gallons. Um, so you can use your own bin again or you can use one that you got from us. And we ask that you set your bin and extra leaf and yard waste out the night before your collection day. Um, as you can see, that brown bin is lined with a bag. Um, you don't have to line um, your food compost bin with a bag, but we ask that you do because it's easier to clean. Um, you don't necessarily have to line your uh, food scraps bin with a clear plastic bag. You can use a black bag, but it's strongly recommended that you use a clear bag because like I said, um, when sanitation workers come by your house and they see a black bag, they automatically assume that it's trash and they will put it in the trash truck and they won't put it on the um, compost truck. You can put your leaf and yard waste in a compostable paper bag, or you can put it in a clear plastic bag, as I mentioned, or you can put it in a bin of your choosing, just the bin can't be any bigger than 55 gallons. So how to compost your leaf and yard waste? Again, you can place any label bin, 55 gallons or less, with a secure lid or in your DSNY brown bin. You can also use paper lawn or leaf bags or clear plastic bags. And you can bundle your twigs and branches uh, in, a, in a bundle no bigger than two, by, two feet by four feet uh, and place on the curb next to, uh, next to the bins or your bags, your garbage bags, uh, and bundle up with twine. 
that's perfectly okay. Um, we will take that as is if you decide to do that. So for your food scraps and food soil paper, we ask that you place in, you place that material in any labeled bin, again, 55 gallons or less, or um, in your DSNY brown bin. Line your bin with any bag that you want to keep it clean. Again, you don't necessarily have to, but we do recommend that you line whatever bin you choose for your food scraps um, with a plastic bag, preferably a clear plastic bag. And tie the bag closed before putting the bin on the curb for collection. So um, I have a question. I have a question. I wanted to know if you only have one slide or if you have more, because you only have one on the screen. Do you have more or uh, it's just the way that the presentation is going? Oh, I apologize. I thought you were all seeing these slides. There are <laughs> several slides. There's only one being shown. Yeah. Thank oh. you. Yeah, someone just, you know, people just said that on the chat. So. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I can't see the chat when I'm sharing my screen. So I apologize. I'm not sure why that is. Um, you know what? Let me try something different. Give me one second. Now we can see another one that said remember. So. You can see that, right? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I also see your hand, Mr. Ted. Do you have a question? Or was it for the presentation that you couldn't see as well? Yeah, it was uh, for the slide presentation. I, I have a Mr. question, yeah, but so I'll wait. I'll wait, I'll wait, yeah. well, I'll, I'll wait till he finish. And I'll ask. All right. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Can everybody see this slide that says remember? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, yes. great. So I've actually just gone through about 11 slides. I have about 11. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take me about another five minutes, but if anyone has, again, I'm, I'm on the call. If anybody has any questions, I can go through the oh. slides that you haven't seen. Um, but I'm literally just going through the slides. So um, again, we can, um, I can continue to do that. Okay. So um, again, no commercial landscaper waste um, is allowed. Um, all food waste must be stored in a bin with a secure lid. So don't place your bags of food waste directly on the curb. And you can mix food waste with your leaf and yard waste only when you're using a bin with a secure lid, right? So if you decide to mix both, that's perfectly okay. Food and yard waste um, are all compostable materials. So they're all, going to the, in, they're all going to the same place. So you can mix the two. Um, if you so choose, but only when you're using a bin with a secure lid. If you're um, putting your food, if you're putting your leaf and yard waste, excuse me, in a compostable paper bag or a clear um, plastic bag, then it needs to be separate from your food waste. So here are some common misconceptions. That composting attracts rats and other pests. Um, it does not. If you keep your food waste in a lidded bin and keep that lidded bin closed and that uh, lid sitting flush on top of the bin, um, it actually will reduce rodent activity in your area, right? Because those bins are made of a large, of a fairly thick anodized plastic that rats find very, very hard to scratch through and to eat through. So it actually, so it, so it actually would take them an extremely long time to actually eat through that, and so they they just they'll just stop and they'll go somewhere else where they can get food uh, more readily available. So a lot of folks think composting is complicated. It really isn't. Um, again, we're asking for folks to kind of change their um, way of thinking about food waste. I mean, a lot of like I said, a lot of folks take. Um, old food, spoiled food, food that they don't want and immediately throw it in the trash. So we're asking you to say, hey, you know what? I can take this, I can put this aside and it will be put to good use. It will be made into fertilizer. It will be made into um, uh, uh, renewable energy. We can definitely, you know, a third of the city's trash 
is food waste. And so this would really help us um, really kind of use that third of, tr of our trash and really reuse it and, um, and, and it'll, really, uh, it'll really help us out. Um, so a lot of folks think that you can't compost meat, bones, dairy products, or cook foods. You can. Um, all of that is compostable material. It all breaks down in our anaerobic at our anaerobic plant. Um, the anaerobic process actually um, breaks down that food into in that lard waste into um, enzymes um, that actually can be composted. So it actually so you can compost that material. Um, you can put plastic bags in your brown bin. You can. Again, we recommend that you do do that. You don't have to, but you should. Um, and most compost gets thrown out. Um, it doesn't, right? So our, even though our trucks look the same, they're all, you know, the, the white standard um, sanitation trucks, we do have separate trucks specifically for compost that takes that uh, material to either our Newtown Creek um, location or um, takes it to our marine transfer stations where it'll be uh, sent out to other locations out of state. So, um, so none of that is thrown out. We actually do compost all that. So how to take care of your outside bin. Um, write your address on your bin. Clean your bin as needed. Again, um, line your bin with a bag. I can't stress that enough because it'll actually help when you want to clean your bin. When you hose it out, it's a lot easier to get the gunk out and to keep it clean. Um, tie the bag closed before uh, set out and make sure you keep the bin closed securely at all times. Um, also, for folks that um, are private homeowners, you may also want to think about potentially chaining your uh, bin to a fence or a gate because unfortunately we have, we are aware that people steal these bins. We're not really sure why people do that, but I, my office has gotten a lot of complaints um, from folks in Queens about people literally coming by and stealing their bins. I mean, they're, they're good solid bins and they're meant to last. So in order for you to keep it, you may want to consider um, chaining it to a gate or a fence if you're a private homeowner. So tips for foreign food waste, food waste inside your home. Um, we ask that you take um, any type of small plastic container um, line, line it with a, a plastic bag, um, clean the container frequently, and you can store scraps in the freezer to prevent odors. I know a lot of people don't really want to do that. I, I hear it all the time. People tell me, Antonio, why do you want me to put old food in my freezer? Um, but we ask that, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to um, participate in the program, that's probably the best way to prevent um, any smelly odors, smelling up your house. And, you know, you can take that out of your freezer and you can dump it um, the night before um, you set out um, your compost or the, the day before it gets picked up on your recycling day, you just dump it out, forget about it, and you're good to go. So your compost will be collected weekly on your recycling days. Um, services year round, there's no sign up uh, needed. And if you don't know when your recycling day is, you can go uh, to um, onon.nyc.gov backslash collection day. Put in your address and it'll tell you when your collection day is, when your um, recycling day is. So place your bin at the curb after 6 p.m. the night before your collection day. If your yard waste is in bags, set it out after 8 p.m. All waste must be set out by midnight to ensure collection. So setting out waste. After 6 p.m., you can set your waste out if it's in a container of 55 gallons or less with a secure lid or after 8 p.m. if putting your bags directly on the curb. Non-recyclable bulk items should be set out on your trash-only collection day. So make sure you don't put any of your bulk items, your non-recyclable bulk items, like if you have an old couch or something that you want to throw out, don't put that on, out on your recycling day. Put that out on your trash-only day.
So residents in buildings with 10 or more units, um, property owners and building management will notify residents where bins will be located. Um, the Department of Sanitation can provide free education material and outreach events for residents in those buildings if they so choose. So you can order tip sheets, you can order signage, you can order bin decals from us directly for free. If you go to nyc.gov backslash sanitation materials, and you can request an event to present information to your residents, um, to uh, residents in your building. Again, if you are located in a building with 10 or more units, if you go to on on dot nyc dot gov backslash event request. So um, my unit, as well as um, several other units in the department, did direct outreach and education to educate folks in Brooklyn about this particular program. Um, we canvassed all buildings in Brooklyn uh, that had uh, nine or less units. And we did targeted calls to the largest property management organizations and tenant organizations in the borough. We also held um, informational sessions. We, a representative, um, either from my office in community affairs or um, several, or some or another division, our division of recycling and sustainability or commercial waste, um, went to one of uh, went to every community board uh, in Brooklyn. Um, we did virtual info sessions for residents, building owners, and their staff. Um, we talked to several civic tenant and trade associations and other community based organizations in the borough. And we also did in person presentations and trainings for high rise building tenants and staff as requested. We will be um, providing for free 40 pound bags of compost um, in all 18 community board districts. Um, eventually that's coming up. Um, we will host distribution events for kitchen containers. Those are those small uh, plastic containers that you could use um, in your home um, that are small enough to fit uh, in your freezer. Um, we're, do, we're doing distribution events for uh, leaf and yard waste uh, bags, the paper bags, and one pound bags of compost throughout the borough. And if you can uh, go to nyc.gov backslash get compost for the dates of those uh, future events. We initially sent out a mailer to all um, Brooklyn residents, uh, which, uh, which you'll see here, which you see here on this slide. Um, all of you should have received, if you're in a private home, you should receive it if you're in a building then you may have seen a, a poster or a sticker on your door. Um, we also did a paid advertising campaign mm -hmm. or a combination of social, uh, community and ethnic web publications, uh, print um, as applicable. Okay, I'm sorry, could you go back to the last uh, uh, slide? I was trying to copy something, just for one second. Sure. Or oh, nyc.gov get composed. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Back, thank you. Thank no you. problem. Backslash get compost. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. So I am. Uh, I so I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah. Thank you for such a great presentation. I also have a question in the chat. I know Ms. Henderson has a question, Ms. Kate, you, I, I see your hand. And I know um, Ms. Taylor also have questions. So what I will do, I will only um, allow this, you know, to go for 15 more minutes so we can take the other presenters. So now this is the time to ask questions. Mr. Tate, you are the first. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Whitaker. Uh, I actually you kind of answered a couple of my questions because uh, one of my questions was regarding the the kitchen bins because I know in other location they were given out. So, but now you mentioned that we could go and you all could you you all could have a distribution uh, for that, right? 
Guys, I think we will we will need that. My other que another question is, uh, you mentioned that uh, we could uh, chain we should uh, uh, chain the bins. However, if we chain them, uh, will the sanitation uh, men uh, or women <laughs> uh, take the the bags out of the bin? And uh, and dump them. In that case, we have to definitely use clear bags because if the if the, if the bins are chain, I really don't see how they'll be able to lift them and dump them in the in the in the in the truck. Okay, and the, the, my my last one is a simple one. Will, now that uh, they started the collection, uh, will the collection sites that are currently in certain locations will be disbanded, or will that continue to be the uh, example in our community? We have one at Nostrum and, and Clarendon, and I'm sorry, Nostrum and Newcom. Will that uh, remain there, or will it will it be discontinued? Mr. Tate, thank you for your questions. I'm going to answer your questions a little about order first. So for that last yeah. question, you said that there was a there is a site on Nostrand and Newkirk. Is is that run by a nonprofit? Would you happen to know? I don't think so. No, because they they, they, um, I, I, they they give out the compost here sometime, but they are green. I believe it's a is it a park or sanitation? Well, quite frankly, I don't know what every one of those um, flyers that you have there, they, they have them there. This, I believe they started in the spring and they're there every Wednesday. Yes, so I've been taking mine there ever since, but uh, I know they have apartment buildings nearby there that uh, may not, the, the owners may not start the, the process on time, so I would I would hate to see that the, this continue that while um, the people in the apartment that want to you know donate the scrap. Uh, right, right, right. Okay, so um, the department has no um, no plans to shut any of those sites down if they yeah. are. By by DSNY, I know that the um, that there are several nonprofit organizations and a lot of community gardens um, tend to compost, and um, we often do for at least for community gardens, not necessarily for 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 parks, but for community gardens, we do take their compost, um, and we yeah. have been there for a number of years. So the department has no um, no plans to shut any of those down because they're working. So you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, with regards to again kitchen containers, yes, there will be um, in the future. I mean, check that site that you had mentioned. There will be um, free giveaways for those, but you don't necessarily have to use the one that the department um, has, which is this one right here that you see in the picture. You can use. I have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may have one, especially if you participate in a program. You know, if you yeah. participate in a pilot from a couple of years back, but you can use any. You can use any in any container that you want. I mean, it's it's to store your food, so you can you can use whatever container that you you want. Um, and with regards to chaining, um, my suggestion to chain um, your brown bin um, to a fence or a gate if you uh, own a private home. I mentioned that because again, you know, we've been getting reports of uh, theft of the bins, but you do need to have, you, you do need to unchain your bin and to put your bin out with the rest of your trash, like on, on your recycling day. So, um, so the sanitation workers can, can dump it out. They're not going to walk over to the area where you would have your bin chained right because mm -hmm. they're all on the schedule so it needs that's why it needs to be on the curb because they can get to it dump mm -hmm. everything out and move on to uh to the next property so you do have to unchain it and walk it to your curb and then you can secure it however you wish to secure it once that's done thank you uh, for thank a you. great answer 
Um, I um, I would like to ask Miss uh, Anderson, Miss Henderson, please ask your question right now. Yes. Um, yourself and ask your question. Yes, my question is: Can you add um food soil foil paper to the food scraps? Because I mean, the, the foil is considered metal. I, I you know. Oh, uh, 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 foil no. Even though it's um, you know, food was in it and it's messed up. Yeah, but um, yeah, but like you said, foil is aluminum. Aluminum is a yeah. metal, and so that won't break down. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 uh, yeah. So your, so your, yeah. So your aluminum, you can't, you can't put it in with that. You can't put it in with your food scraps, right? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Miss Taylor, followed by Miss Costa. I don't have a question. I was just clapping. You don't have a question. All no. right. So, uh, all right. So I will ask Miss Brida Costa. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Good evening. I wanted to know, and this could be a silly question, if um, I'd like to line the uh, compost uh, garbage can with a plastic bag. Is it okay to put multiple plastic bags inside of the plastic bag for composting, or do they have to be in one bag? Like, would it be able to separate? The bags, if they're inside of a big plastic bag, I just don't want to like not have the trash can line. Oh, I see. So you want to line the bin with the bag and then put another bag in it for your compost. And when you're ready, you could tie, you know, you tie up that bag and then you can take it out and all the sanitation workers take it out without the separate liner coming out. Like you want to have multiple liners so you don't have that that issue with cleaning the bin so much. Basically, because the, the composting, the bags I'm using for the compost currently are small. So there are going to be multiple bags, uh, you know, um, throughout the week that I put into the one brown bin. But can I put a plastic bag in the bin and just throw the multiple bags in the bin and just, you know, tie up the plastic bag that's lining? Yeah, that should, that should with the multiple bags inside. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Problem. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's as long as the sanitation worker can lift everything out of it and throw yeah. it out, then then we're good. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for the presentation. It's exactly 8.14. I don't know if there is a last minute question. Otherwise, I will ask you if you can wrap up if there is no question. So going once, twice. All right, so I think you can, um, you have the link to provide. Thank you for saying that. And I think someone may ask in the chat if the PowerPoint will be shared. I don't know if this is something that you can do. If you share it with me, I can share it with the members. Um, so those two things. Yeah, one is the link. And then secondly, will that PowerPoint presentation be shared? Yes, I can share the PowerPoint. I will drop it here in the chat. In the meantime, I will ask Ms. Uh, Carly Chambly from Partnership for Parks to be ready for the presentation. Hi, Abrola. Yeah, sure, that's fine. I can go whenever, whenever I need to, if you're ready now. All right, I'm just waiting for um, the link to be in the chat from DSNY and um, my request for the presentation was granted, so um, I'm waiting for that two, these two items, and then we can proceed. Ms. Antoine, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to uh, post this in the chat. I can email this to you right. when I'm in the office. That will be fine. Yes, that will be fine. Okay. okay. All right. Do you have any last um, thing that you would like to say before I let you go? Ms. Antoine, are you talking to, to me? Yes. Oh, um, 
well, thank you all for your time. Um, we, you know, I really do appreciate it. You know, and you know, I ask on behalf of the department uh, for uh, for everyone to um, to give this the old college try. Uh, you know, I know a lot of folks are still very hesitant about um, about food composting. They may not understand it, or they may just think that it's too much of a burden. Um, but I do ask that you know, if you try it. Um, you may actually like it. Uh, we hope that you do. We hope that you uh, you you do it, so you know it can be successful. I mean, ultimately, our goal is to get rid of the rats, which everyone universally hates because everyone hates rats with good reason. And you know, we also want to do uh, do right by by our communities and uh, and by the planet as a whole. So um, you know, so we ask that everyone. Um, uh, uh, compost. Um, make sure you you know you separate your leaf and yard waste, and uh, you know and and uh, if you have uh, you know any questions, uh, please reach out. Thanks so much. Thank you so much uh, for being with us for providing all this information. I uh, will follow up with you shortly. Thank you. Uh, now I will call Ms. Um, Chambly because as you all know from the agenda, um, this Saturday we will give some love to children playground uh, with some cleaning and um, some other activities. So I will give the mic now to Ms. Chambly who might, you know, explain more about what will happen on Saturday at children playground. And then remember after children, we will move on to other parks that also Need some love. So, Ms. Chambly, um, now you can begin with the uh, information and presentation to the members. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you, Berlot. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so, I'm Carly Chambly. I am with uh, Partnerships for Parks. So, this is a joint program of the Parks Department as well as the City Parks Foundation. Um, and I quickly just wanted to say to uh, Mr. Whitaker, thank you again for the curbside composting presentation. Um, I was hearing you refer to uh, Staten Island's rollout uh, next April. So as a Staten Island resident, um, I've been awaiting this for quite a while. <laughs> um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. So thank you again. You're very welcome. All right, <laughs> thanks. Uh, so yeah, I will definitely be talking about Tilden Playground. Um, but for a moment, I did want to scope out just for a sec to kind of talk about some of the the work that, you know, me and uh, Berlot have been kind of uh, brainstorming, you know, for the community of East Flatbush and for CB17. Uh, so partnerships for parks, you know, we do support uh, volunteer groups, um, organizations, sometimes they're, you know, very small scale uh, grassroots communities who want to uh, really care for and tend to their local parks. Um, generally, this looks like uh, volunteer programming. That's how we mostly support groups. Um, if you've heard of the It's My Park Day initiative, um, you know, those are volunteer projects that, uh, you know, cater towards uh, beautification, uh, weeding, you know, horticulture projects, uh, painting projects as well. Um, so that's, you know, really the, the realm of work that um, partnerships is kind of facilitating, you know, throughout the year. Um, but we do also find ways to support uh, other groups, you know, with um, the goals that they have in their communities um, and in their green spaces as well, kind of working towards advocacy um, and relaying information from the community to the parks department as well. Um, so serving as a liaison um, so, you know, whatever that you are hoping to see uh, in East Flatbush, that's something we can definitely talk about in just a moment as well. Um, if you do have any other ideas uh, for uh, just ways to, you know, bring more engagement um, and activation to some of the parks, you know, that um, you are surrounded by. Uh, so this Saturday, uh, we will be holding an It's My Park Day at Tilden Playground. Uh, this has been a long time coming, um, mostly because we've just had, had had a lot of weather issues coming up. I know we had a air quality alert uh, when we were trying to do this back in the summertime, um, but it's 
definitely been a park of uh, a park of interest. Um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities for uh, horticulture projects, uh, for painting as well, kind of renovating the park itself, uh, bringing more uh, youth programming as well. Um, there's a playground as well as a court, as well as, you know, a little horticulture space. Uh, so lots of different ways that we can be kind of activating this park. Um, so this Saturday, you know, it will be from 10 to 12. Um, we'll mostly be working on some uh, beautification, like cleanup. Um, we'll be weeding as well, um, but hoping ultimately to have long-term engagement, right? So that really is the the goal of you know what uh, partnerships is hoping to provide for the community. Um, you know, to try to form groups or form committees who can. Uh, you know, maybe it is kind of starting small with a little cleanup project and then from there, you know, having larger scale community events, um, you know, or potentially having compost sites like we were mentioning a moment ago. Um, so there are a lot of different uh, areas, you know, where partnerships can come in um, and support you all uh, for, you know, the, the vision that you have uh, for your, your green spaces and, and use Flatbush. Um, so, yeah, a little, little promotion there for uh, this Saturday from 10 to 12. Um, if you are willing and able to come that day, please, please do. We would love to see you. Um, again, this will be kind of a, a family-friendly um, activity as well. Um, so anyone is, is more than welcome to join. Uh, please, you know, reach out to Berlot, to RSVP for this Saturday. Um, and we're also hoping to, you know, continue this and to have uh, more projects that will be going on throughout uh, CB17. Um, I'll also plug in, and maybe this can be a, a segue um, for the October 14th event as well at Patagat Park. Um, I know that we will have uh, someone else who will be speaking in a bit more detail about that. Um, but that's another space where we are really hoping to uh, to show some love and appreciation, um, especially for the the trees, you know, in, in Patagat Park. And there are really uh, beautiful natural areas. Um, and of course, you know, this this is something that in, in this community we really are hoping to to see more of, um, you know, and having more green and less concrete <laughs> ultimately. Uh, or, you know, how to better utilize uh, the spaces that we do have. Um, so, again, you know, if you do have any questions in particular about this event on Saturday, uh, you know, feel I'm, free to to ask. Um, and yeah, again, I'm Mr. Tate mm -hmm. raising his hand, you know, like you have a question, Mr. Tate? Y yes, I do. And, mm -hmm. uh, I I'm sorry to be. Um, a little pessimistic, but uh, uh, they were predicting bad weather again for Saturday. So I was wondering if you yeah. have a possible, what, what they call it, uh, rain date, if if we get washed out. Because up to tonight, I heard they say that uh, Saturday they may be washed out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for that. I know I was looking on the, the weather app earlier today and it was showing <laughs> that chance of rain. Um, we, we do have a rain date. Um, so, Burlock, correct me if I'm wrong, but October I believe 25th. it was for October 28th. Uh, 21st? 21st? 21st. Um, yeah. And again, October you know, 21st. if this is, yeah, October 21st. Um, and if this is something that's just a, a light rain, I mean, we definitely have mm. uh, ponchos available we'll have a couple of, of tents set up as well so um we will be making that call sometime on friday um and me and burlock can you know distribute that information to uh to those who have rsvp but yeah i'm, I'm having fingers crossed for for this saturday as yes. uh, so we'll we'll see where the weather takes us but yeah thank you for asking because i know that's you're welcome always a consideration 
Um, I can also add, as we are on that topic, that the members will, will be doing the work through, and before we said October 21st, I think I put this date, so we can do the work through, because um, there is a concern that this Saturday will not address, like, you know, some major, um, you know, innovation in the playground, and uh, um, members will do a first work through, and Ms. Tremblay will arrange with some stakeholders to do a second one, like council members, and I think the Bowo, um, um, I don't know, uh, you can correct me, Ms. Chandler, the list that uh, we said in terms of stakeholders, we can also come to the second walkthrough to see the major improvement that children uh, need. I don't know if you want to touch upon that, you know, as we are talking about, um, you know, children right now. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so that has been in the works to have uh, more uh, thorough walkthroughs um, of Tilden as well as some other parks throughout CB17 um, and to have everyone in person as well. You know, so having parks representation from the from the borough office, having partnerships for parks, you know, so these these voices are going to directly <laughs> be, you know, navigated to the, the borough office through this, um, through this type of walkthrough. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that is, you know, right now we are uh, tentatively planning, at, at least for Tilden will be October 21st, um, and then planning with, uh, you know, potential um, elected officials, um, you know, or other kind of stakeholders for a, a later date uh, for different parks throughout CB17. And I think you said in November, early November can be um, good for like, you know, to make those type of arrangement, correct? Yeah, yeah, so that's what we're aiming towards. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. I don't know if there is more questions for you, otherwise I'll wait for everybody to be there on Saturday. If there is any question, please raise your hand. Hold on then that, we can move to the next speaker. Any questions? Yes, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I do have another question. Because did she then did, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot the name again. But uh, did you mention that the, uh, the what the, I'm sorry, the presentation on uh, by the City of Forest Day is going to be at Allegat Park? Yes, I miss Taylor 14? is here. Uh, yes, on the 14th. Yes, the okay, city of Fresno. Yeah, I didn't have any. I don't have any information on that. I didn't see a fly uh, on okay. that. So yes, so Miss Taylor is here. She will cover um, that. You know, in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, oh okay. Because I was going to ask one time, but if someone is going to cover it, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Um, no more questions for Miss Chandley. I will be like. Uh, we can move to the next speaker. Any question? Going once, going twice. I, I do right. have a quick note. Yeah, I do have a quick yeah. note that I can add. Um, just as we're talking about uh, potential uh, renovations um, or restorations, sometimes right in in different parks uh, in the neighborhood, there is um, a page on the the Parks Department website where you can track. Uh, upcoming and active capital projects. Um, so that's something I'm happy to put into the chat uh, for anyone who is interested to kind of see what work is uh, currently being done. Um, this also includes uh, tree plantings as well, mm -hmm. either on street trees or within the park. Um, so, you know, just a way to kind of capture that in uh, in real time. Um, and again, you know, if you do have ideas uh, for uh, volunteer engagement for, um, you know, it, it could really be anything that that you are are passionate about, you know, when it comes to um, environmental stewardship and for green spaces, um, please feel free to to reach out. Um, I'll put my email uh, in the chat as well. Um, so okay. thanks everyone. Yeah, thank you. And uh, for the volunteer, I know I will need volunteer to assist with the signing sheet on Saturday. I know I already have a volunteer for the refreshment table. Um, I don't know, you know, 
other people can volunteer to do other things. But, you know, uh, it's always good to have, you know, members of the committee being part of, you know, the volunteer um, leader uh, type of thing for, you know, when we are doing events. So um, I know you will um, be there, but, you know, if you can let me know. Um, if you have any preference for any volunteer assignment, I would really uh, welcome that. And uh, even for assisting in for distributing materials to the volunteers, that would be something also you can assist with. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we will be coming on Saturday. Even if you can stay for you know the entire time, you can give two minutes. That will work as well. I, we just need to have you know people there to assist so we can make you know children you know a beautiful uh, place where children can, you know, come and play and enjoy. Um, I will now call um, Ms. Taylor to um, introduce herself and then start talking about the City of Forest Day, which will be on October 14 at 10 a.m. Um, Pottergate Park will receive the law sometimes. Ms. Taylor? Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Rona Taylor. I am the executive director of the Central and Southeast Brooklyn CDC. And we are, um, our mission essentially is to prioritize the health and well being of the residents of Central and Southeast Brooklyn. And part of the way that we do this is by connecting people to nature. Uh, we are a member of the, the um, Forest for All Coalition, which is the organization that is sponsoring um, the City of Forest Day, along with uh, Parks and Open Space Partners Coalition and the New York Department of Parks and Recreation. And um, essentially, City of Forest Day is a citywide event. Um, it's been created to raise awareness of the importance of the urban forest in New York City. And, um, you know, the, the coalition feels that it's essential that New Yorkers play um, a role in caring for the lungs of our city, which are the trees. And um, it's a day for people across the city to learn more about the urban forest and how to take care of it. Um, and so I'm really excited to be partnering with um, with Carly uh, from the um, partnerships with parks. Is it partnerships with their four parks? I'm sorry, um, <laughs> but very happy to be um, partnering. Um, they were so instrumental in helping us organize the event. Also really grateful to be on this call this evening to be able to share this information with you. And Berlot, thank you for inviting me to share more about this event. Um, you know, I. I really hope that this can be something um, that can be an annual event um, that we can come together on and and take care of the trees. Part of the one of the challenges is that we um, the coalition exists to expand the tree canopy by 30% in New York City. In uh, this is really important for Central Brooklyn in particular because. Uh, Due to there not being a lot of green space and trees throughout central Brooklyn, um, in terms of climate change events, it's very vulnerable to uh, like extreme heat. And um, having trees and having more green space actually contributes to the cooling um, of these of the spaces. So, and in addition, um, there have been lots of trees planted over time. And there aren't enough people who, you know, there aren't enough urban foresters who can care for the trees. So us coming together as a community to care for the trees in our community is very helpful. So I just wanted to um, share that with you all and um, thank you for your time. Thank you as well. Um, quick question. Um, can you clarify the type of maintenance your organization mm -hmm. can provide? Because a lot of times mm -hmm. the question that I have is question about planting is one, but the maintenance is something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's a big part of what we'll be doing on, on the 14th is we'll be providing mulch around the base of the trees um, and mulching helps in a number of different ways. Um, but one of the ways that is really impactful, like, given the flooding that we had a couple of days ago, 
um, the mulching helps to absorb uh, the water um, so that there isn't as much water that's going into the street. Um, so that's one way that we could be um, addressing an environmental issue and also caring for the trees. And um, it's my understanding, Carly, if you can uh, let me know if this is correct or not, but that there's, um, you know, the mulching is is kind of an ongoing thing and uh, the trees always need refreshing. So it's something that can be happening. Maybe um, we could schedule um, that type of activity throughout the year, if that's something that you're interested in, Ms. Berlon. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, I don't know if there is any question. I know Mr. Ted wanted to ask a question earlier. I don't know if you still have a question or if someone else has a question. Well, yeah, basically my question is regarding, hello, Mr. Taylor, how are you? <laughs> yes, uh, um, regarding the, the, the trees that have been planted planted around here, which I'm happy to see the planted trees. However, who is responsible for the maintenance of those trees? Because uh, these, um, so some of the sidewalks are a mess because uh, those trees where they planted the beds are full of weeds, all kind of uh, uh, what you call it, crabgrass, and you, you name it. I have some pictures that I could share. Uh, right, even right around the corner from the Community Board 17 on Al Albany Avenue, it's really a, a bush that eventually is going to create more ins insects and rats. So I was wondering if who is responsible for the maintenance of those tree beds. Yeah, I think ultimate. Oh, sorry, please. Oh, no, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I can yeah. just provide some insight on behalf of the parks department. Um, so I know when it comes to any kind of street trees uh, or trees that are planted within the park, uh, parks will take care of them and maintain them for at, at least for two years, for two years. So that's really for the you know formation and development of the tree. Um, and then at that point, because of you know a, a lot of different factors in the capacity of the parks department, that's where we really are, um, you know, trying to gain support from people in the community who um, would really like to take an active role in stewarding uh, these trees. So there, there is a two year requirement um, when it does come to um, any type of uh, dangerous situations. Let's say if there is a, a hanging branch, you know, in a street tree that's maybe coming into the, the street or going into the pathway. Um, or any type of uh, tree infection. Um, that's something that parks does uh, come in. Um, there are tree service requests as well um, that people just local residents can uh, submit. So there is a system. You can either do that through uh, 311 or through the parks website. Um, so at that point, you know, parks would be responsible for tending to that. Um, but for day to day maintenance, um, you know, say watering, uh, weeding in the tree bed, uh, mulching as well. So lot, lots of different ways um, in which, you know, local residents can really take active roles um, in the, you know, in, in stewarding the, the trees around them. Um, I'll add to that there are different programs available, um, like the stewardship program through the parks department. So they have uh, different trainings that uh, residents can take, um, you know, to, I guess, uh, confidently, you know, care for the, the trees uh, around you, as well as um, even getting certifications like a, like a citizen pruner um, certification that you can get uh, to actually prune street trees. Um, otherwise, you would not be able to uh, so yeah, lots of lots of different trainings, um, you know, for uh, you know people in the community who are interested in that. But again, when it comes to uh, responsibility, I will just you know reiterate that it's usually the uh, two year the two year mark, um, and then again with any kind of dangerous situations, that's something that uh, parks again would step into and resolve. So I hope hope that helps answer your question, uh, Rona. If you do, um, yeah. if you didn't want to add anything else. 
Yeah, the only thing that I wanted to add is that um, I'm happy to like my organization is very committed to this uh, particular issue around tree stewardship. And so I'm happy to work with uh, this committee and the community board um, to organize events around those types of um, activities. Yeah, 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 thank you so, okay. so much. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just follow up on something? Yeah, yeah, Ms. Chambly yeah, and, 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 and Mr. Rie, th thank you for your information. However, yes, I, <laughs> I, I, on my block, I planted two of them, not in front of my house, but in between, uh, on both sides. I've been cleaning, pre cleaning that. But however, mm -hmm. when I walk, uh, and um, I could include Brooklyn Avenue too, so if, if the city is paying a, a gardener to, to take care of that, then, then those people need to come and uh, take care of that. It's ugly. It's really ugly, and uh, it's, it's going to. Uh, it's, it's not. It's not going to. It's going to make it uh, even worse with all the lantern mm -hmm. flies that we have, because we have a place to live. Walking so I will be fucking. Um, so, so, so I will be fucking follow up. Sure that they follow up with the people who are supposed to take care of those plans, because if they're getting paid mm -hmm. to do that, and they're leaving it like that, it's, it's not okay. right. All right. I'll see if I can follow up uh, with Ms. Chambly and Ms. Taylor on this issue, because I think um, this is not the first time, you know, people mention how ugly their neighborhood can be, especially when they have trees that is not being taken care of. Um, now it's 842. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, one thing that I wanted to say is that the next meeting will uh, be exactly on election day, and I'm trying to see if we can um, postpone it to November 14 instead of November 7. Um, you might think about that, if that day will work for the good, because we also have to plan our um, holiday um, tree lighting ceremony, which will be, uh, I think the date that I, March the previous date will be December 15. So by November 14, the application for toys will be put in place. A lot of things will happen before that. So please let me know if November 14 can be the next um, date for our next meeting because November 7 will not be possible. And we have a presentation that will be uh, very important on that day. So if you can't make it, let me know ahead of time so we know what to do. Um, at this time, I will ask one or two members if they have any resources to share with the group, because I think since the last meeting, we said that this is a great thing. If you know of anything happening in the community that you would like to share, raise your hand and I will give you the mic. One or two members, because it's already 8.44 and I don't want to keep you too long. Anybody with any information who would like to share anything, please raise your hand right now. Or if you don't see the raise your hand button, you can start talking. I will, you know, um, accommodate you. Going once, going twice, anybody with any information to share? All right, I think that's it for tonight. <laughs> um, so please let me know if November 14 will work for you. You can either um, send an email or give me a call so we can um, talk about that and I will share the information from DSNY with you. Uh, remember also we have um, October 14 for the um, uh, for the presentation Ms. Taylor just presented for the City of Forest Day, that will be on October 14 at Pottergate Park at 10. Oh, Ms. Adele, yeah, you can go. Go ahead, Ms. Bennett. Yeah, Ms. Adele, I recognize you. You can uh, unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, I want to discuss maybe for the next time, so we maybe to have the park please come. There will be a lot of activity going on in the park that should not. Uh, I think your voice was not clear. I don't know if anyone else can hear you, but I have both time. Can you repeat? Can you hear me? Okay. 
I don't know if someone else can hear. You can kind of relay the message for me, Fadel, because I mm -hmm. can't hear. That doesn't. Mr. Ted, can you hear what Ms. Adele is saying? Because I can't hear. I don't know if on my it's, hand it's or so you know, it's because I'm She's breaking up. It's very difficult to understand what she's saying. Okay, so I thought that it was on my hand. Okay, so uh, Miss Adele, your voice, you know, is breaking. I don't know if you can try again. I put it in the chat. Yeah, so your voice is... Yeah, keep... You, yeah, you, 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 good now. Keep, you know, keep talking so we can see if we can hear you. I put it in, oh, the, you chat. Can see it in the chat. All right. All right, thank you. Um, so for now, I I think if there is nothing um, else to talk about, I think we cover everything from the agenda. Remember, the minutes is online. I think Ms. Fraser posted the link in the chat where you can kind of listen <laughs> to um, what was said. I don't think that we can have a paper or, you know, minutes mailed to us. So there is a way that you can access the minutes. Please do so. And I will reach out to you before Saturday, October 7th and before Saturday, October 14th for the um, uh, City of Forest Day. Um, so now I will ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. It's 8.47. I would like to ask for a motion to address the um, monthly meeting for the Parks and Beautification Committee. This is Bree DePasta. I make a motion to adjourn. So, uh, thank you. I need a second. I second the motion. Uh, who is that? Kylene Car Carleen Murray Gordon second in the motion. Oh, okay. Okay, Ms. Colin Gordon, second the motion. Thank you, everyone, for staying until the end. I really appreciate that. And the information will go to you, go out to you. I will send a couple of things. The link, if you couldn't get access to the chat, I will send the link to um, access the board. Um, uh, the minutes, and I will send the information from the Department of Sanitation and information from Ms. Taylor as well. Thank you, everyone, and I wish you a wonderful night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.